Yo, what's good, original crew man? We're back. We have music executive attacked by a shadow person, the Christopher Case story. Let's check this out. Let's see uh the music executive attacked. Well he was attacked by some dead uh I never know what's about to come out your mouth. Let's just get into it. No, I was gonna say some uh, some dead R and B singers or some dead pop singers or Mozart or something. Say yeah, motherfucker, can't touch the dirt. You can't take that serious. Come on, let's see. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, that sound good. <laughs> With that being said, make sure you check out the links in the description box down below. You already know where to go if you want the first part. All you gotta do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals, like it with a thumbs up. But let's go. Let's check him out, man. Let's see what his story is about. You ready? I'm ready. They get it. On April 18th, 1999, police entered Christopher Case's apartment and they discovered his body. The coroner came in and was able to determine in relative short order that Christopher had died of natural causes. But when friends and... R.I.P. Sorry about that. I... You just thought he was a tag. You didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, I didn't know he had deceased. I, I apologize. My... My condolences to him and his family. Let's go. ...to determine in relative short order that Christopher had died of natural causes. But when friends and family got a hold of the coroner's report, they turned to the police and they were like, wait, have you not heard what was happening to Chris in the week leading up to his death? And so police began interviewing the friends and family of Christopher Case, and they unraveled this totally insane story that to this day baffles investigators. Christopher Case predicted his own death. But before we get started, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right channel because that's all I do. And I upload at least three to four times a week. And I'm actually trying to get to five times a week. So I'm all in on this thing. And if that's what you're into, then please, if you would, gently slap the like button and then subscribe to my channel and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any of those weekly uploads. All right, let's get into the story. By early 1999, Christopher Case was living his best life. He was 35 years old, he had moved out to Seattle to pursue a career in music, and he had landed a job at a music company in Seattle, and he had risen to the rank of executive at that company. He was incredibly fit, you know, he was known for being at the gym seven days a week, you know, he took vitamins, he took his health very seriously, he had loads of friends, people really liked him, he was very close with his family. And, you know, despite all that, despite his popularity and success, he had been single for years. And even though he was not actively seeking a, a companion, his friends and family were continuously trying to set him up on dates. But Chris would prefer to not go on a date and actually stay home by himself and listen to music because Chris had an obsession with a very specific type of music. He loved music from ancient time, specifically from Egypt. And so he would stay home instead of go out on dates and, you know, crush ancient Egyptian music. That was like his idea of a great night. On April 11th of 1999, Chris was on a business trip because part of his job required a ton of travel. And he was on a trip with a couple of his coworkers um, who were also friends of his. They go out to San Francisco and on the 11th, they decide to go out for dinner that night. And one of his co-workers decides to bring along a friend who was someone that lived in the area. So they get to dinner and one of them has their friend who's a, an older woman, very attractive, very kind of intense looking woman. Uh, she was about 20 years older than Chris, that was his guess. And she sits down and the, and the four of them are just kind of having a nice conversation. And at some point, the older woman really takes an interest in Chris. And Chris takes an interest in her because it would turn out that they had a lot in common and then she actually admitted to him that she was really into music from ancient times. And Set up. I don't trust her already. Do you? I don't know. That's that's one thing about being like doing the music industry. That's one another reason why I like 
I kind of didn't didn't want to. What? What you finna say? I was saying unless the friend like told her some things about him. But whatever. you never know. What Just people you know, mean. like hey, you know, I have. A guy that I think maybe that's one reason why, I like, even though I got a degree in it and all that, and mm. I had opportunities, I really didn't want to like fully dive into it because I don't like just meeting randos and got a fake kick it. Mm. You know how many random people you you meet. You know what I'm saying? And then you got a fake cordially, hey, how you doing? Like you didn't know you would have to do all that. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm but I'm at the end of the day, I'm still very much so. Not necessarily just to myself, but like the industry is full of fake ass people, and they only want to associate with you if they feel as though they can use you. Mm-hmm. Other than that, they don't want to kick it with you. They don't want to talk to you. They don't even act like they know you out in public unless they feel as though they can use you for something. Yeah. Ain't no hey, how you doing? How's the family? Ain't no catching up or none of that. Is what can I get out of you? Yeah. They're going to want your phone number. They're going to, yo, we should go out hang sometime. You're like, bro, I've been around you for months. Yeah. But, I don't know. But I just, it's just something about, like, the way it's set. I don't know. I feel you. I could be just jumping too far into it. Maybe not. Actually, has a, a specific interest in music from ancient Egypt. And so, to Chris, he's like, how can this be? And he's like, this is my, my passion. I love that type of music. And they really hit it off. Now, Chris was not looking for any sort of romantic involvement with this woman. He was just so excited to talk about something he loved. And so all night, Chris and this older woman are chatting it up and they're super into each other. He was looking at her purely from a platonic sense, but it was becoming clear by the end of the night, at least Chris was realizing this, that she was looking at him with a romantic angle. She was interested in Chris. And in fact, right as he's kind of realizing this, she asked him if, if he wants to leave with her and go back to, to her place. No. And he politely declines because he's, he's not interested. He, he loved chatting with her about music and other, other things they had in common, but he wasn't interested in her romantically. And she became a little bit more aggressive and said, no, come on, come on, let's get out of here. I got a place right down the road. We can go listen to music and hang out in my place. And he felt really uncomfortable and he kept saying no, but she wouldn't let it go. And so finally, as she's literally trying to get him to say yes, he says, hey, you know what? I, I've had a long night and I'm gonna go. And so he stands up to leave and the woman goes from being very flirtatious and friendly to very angry at Chris. And she looks at him and kind of abruptly says to him, I'm actually a witch and I'm gonna put a curse on you. You're gonna be dead within a week. Okay. And he just leaves. So what? the next morning on oh. April 12th, Chris gets up. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Oh, you meet, child. and especially in those child. type of in those type of lanes and, and it, like, bro, it's, I even on a small scale with with what I did, I met a lot of weird people, bro. And I just be like, I can't fake kick it. I took you to an event, and that you even said a lot of people in that mall just rubbed you the wrong way. Because it was very much so fake kicking. It wasn't not. And where did I go? Did I stay in there? Yeah, you stayed in there. You, but I, thought you were, I, I thought I ended up going to the car or something. I did you? At some, at at some, some point, point, you did. You did. did you was like... But Baby, for the most part... Maybe me. I said... I for the, for the most part, you was kicking it with Ari and talking to him. Yeah, I guess. And they were... Everybody was just... uh was and, sweet. And then they were talking about, you remember he said he was going to go to New York, and the other dude was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to New York. And he was like, I'm supposed to be going to New we supposed to be getting a, a spot yeah. together and stuff. I liked one dude. I didn't like the other one. Yeah. And you then, know which one. Yeah, yeah. But then, um, never you went. Got, you got no, I'm to, just, I'm yeah. letting you know. Never went to New York. One went to New York. The other one didn't. They don't even, yeah. fake kicking it, bro. I'm telling you, like, Bro, certain stuff is just like you can. But this, this is on a whole different level. Honestly, why did she come though? Is what I'm saying. What was the reasoning? And if you know that your friend kind of like. If we going out to dinner, you you already knew your friend was. Ain't no telling how he met her, the friend that brought her to. Why are we even bringing people together? No, her. Uh. Did she work with him? No, not the one at the witch. That witch. That's is what a, I'm saying. I'm saying why? Of, I said. I said why would you bring her? That's what, what I was said. the reason? I said what was the reason in bringing her? Yeah, 
the like, dude, the dude, we just out, having, we just having a, it sounds like a, like a, like a ketchup type of, yeah. But we traveling, so it sounds like a, like a. I mean, that's sound cool. for the night. That's cool and all, but if you want to hang out with your friend and catch up, y'all do that on your own time. Like I, I know she shouldn't have been brought into I, the circle. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Are you listening? Yes, you ain't listening to me. I, I'm saying that. I'm saying y'all should. You can hang out with her on a different day, yeah. or whatever. But I, I do understand that people are like, hey, you know, I'm right down the street from you, right around the corner. We're gonna be at this restaurant. Swing by. Like I get it, people Don't. do that, but if you know your friend weird, leave her at home. Facts. And he just leaves. So the next morning on April 12th, Chris gets up and he heads to the airport and he flies back to Seattle. When he lands in Seattle, he calls his friend Sammy, who was one of his very close friends uh, back when he lived on the East Coast. He just wanted to share this weird experience with a close friend. And so they're kind of laughing about the whole thing. Neither of them are taking the curse seriously yeah. at all. It was like, you really dodged a bullet. It's good you did not go home with her. So in good spirits, Chris hangs up the phone with Sammy and for the next 24 hours, Chris would fall right back into his regular daily life in Seattle. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary happened. But all that would change starting the night of April 13th, which would have been 48 hours after his encounter with this woman in San Francisco. So Chris lives alone, he doesn't have pets. And he gets into bed that night and he's laying there and before he falls asleep, he hears whispering coming from outside of his bedroom in the kitchen area, kind of near the front door. And he's thinking to himself like, I didn't just hear whispering. Like, what? No one's in here. What's going on? And he's, he's hearing the whispering and then it kind of stops. And before he gets up to investigate, he's like, okay, I probably was just hearing things. That, that wasn't real. And he's just kind of laying there trying to go to sleep. And then he hears it again, except now it's not coming from the kitchen area. It's coming from a separate area in his apartment outside of the, the room he's in. And so now he's wondering, like, is someone, did someone sneak into my house? Like, is there a burglar in my house right now? And so he quietly gets out of his bed and he walks over to his door. He opens it up and he can still hear the whispering and it's coming from like his laundry room a little ways away. But as soon as he opens the door and he pokes his head out, the whispering stops. And he's just standing there like looking around, like hoping that there isn't anything in his apartment. And then out of the corner of his eye, near the front door, he sees something dash across his periphery. Like a shadowy figure basically darts across the room. And so he looks over and he's, he's immediately afraid that it really is a burglar in his room. And as he's looking, he's turning the light on next to him, he's looking around and he starts hearing the whispering again. And now it's coming from another section of his house. So he just starts turning on all the lights and looking around to try to like make sure no one's in his apartment. He's kind of, he's not even thinking about the whispering. He's just looking for the shadowy figure that he saw run past him. And so he's looking all over his apartment. All the lights are on. It's a small apartment. And as soon as he feels comfortable that the door is locked still, everything's locked and there's nobody here, that's when he realizes that that whispering is still happening. And so he turns back around and now the whispering is coming from his bedroom where he was. And so he walks over to his bedroom and looks inside and he just, he can't pinpoint the whispering. Like he keeps hearing it and walking to wherever it's coming from and as soon as he gets near it the whispering stops and he's thinking to himself like am i dreaming is this a dream am i losing my mind did, did somebody slip me something like last night like is what's wrong with me so he has this horrible night where he's up all night chasing down whispers in his apartment that keep vanishing and then seeing shadowy figures running around and lurking in corners but he can't ever see them when he looks at them. And so the next morning on April 14th, when you know the sun comes up, he hasn't slept, the first phone call he makes is to Sammy, his friend. And he's totally panicked. And we know about this phone call because Sammy would tell police about all her interactions with, with Chris over the course of this week. She would say that he was totally panicked. And she even thought as she's taking this phone call that it's just so weird, you know, that Chris is scared of noises in his apartment and like, figures moving around in his apartment because it's so unlike Chris. He's, I mean, definitely a skeptic. He's just like a, he's a no BS kind of guy. So the idea that he would suddenly be terrified of something paranormal running around his apartment just seems so unlike him. But as she's listening to him, he was so scared about what was in his apartment. He knew it wasn't a person because he looked everywhere. There was no people. And that's the only reason he didn't call the police is because he didn't want to tell the police 
that some shadow figure that's whispering in my apartment is harassing me. Like, what are the police going to do? So Sammy hangs up the phone with Chris after trying to reassure him and just hopes that whatever that was doesn't happen again. But unfortunately for Chris, the night of the 14th now, he's going to bed again and he starts hearing the whispers and immediately he's out there looking, lights on. He's looking for these whispers. They keep disappearing. He can't find the source. He's getting frustrated. He's scared. He keeps seeing that thing dart around his apartment. Except this night, he also noticed that he would look and he could get close enough to where he could break out the silhouette of what looked like a person, you know, like lingering in the corner of his apartment, but he'd go closer to it and it would disappear. It was like the manifestations of what he was seeing, the whispers and this figure running around his apartment were becoming more vivid. But he's also thinking like, I didn't sleep the night before. This could be my imagination. Like, I don't know if this is happening, but he's spiraling and he knows it. So the next day on the 15th, he doesn't call Sammy, but he calls a couple of his other friends that are anonymous. And they would all tell police that they got a similar story that Sammy had gotten that first night after the 14th. No matter what was happening, Chris believed it was happening and Chris was terrified, but this wasn't even the worst of it yet. So that night on the 15th, Chris gets in bed and now he's barely slept for two consecutive nights. And he's determined to just go to sleep that he, he's trying to tell himself that everything that you've experienced the past couple nights is probably brought on by stress. It's brought on by now, certainly a lack of sleep. So he's telling himself like, just, just go to sleep, just get in bed and go to sleep. So he gets in bed and he's laying there and he does fall asleep, but he wakes up in the middle of the night and he can't move his body. He's, he's paralyzed. He can't move and he's totally awake and he starts hearing whispering. And now his level of fear is so high because now he's immobile but the past two nights he's heard that whispering in his apartment and he's seen that that figure moving around his apartment you think he probably should have uh like because you've been a high high rank music executive you make pretty decent money you think he should probably went and got a hotel room for a couple nights <laughs> or you feel like it or do you would you like, talk to me. I'm waiting for you to finish your question. Or do you think he should have, uh, or do you think that whatever that's bothering him. Whatever this entity is. That's bothering him would have followed him. Follow. Even. Mm -hmm. So you think he would have followed? Mm -hmm. For real? Even if I get a hotel room? I think so. If 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 he believes mm. that he's hearing this stuff and if you believe that the this woman probably did what she said she was going to do, like, it's not necessarily... The house itself, where you're true, at, it's true. on you. Whatever she 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 put this on you. So wherever you go, it's no seems like it's no escaping. Mm. But we'll see. I'm, I'm going out. That way. Sorry, y'all. No, it's just, I, never mind. I push. I push this. I thought you was done. My bad. I'm done. Whispering in his apartment, and he's seen that that figure moving around his apartment, and so he's he's laying there in darkness because he went to bed in darkness. And he starts hearing whispering outside his room, and then it stops. And then he starts hearing whispering inside of his closet, and then it stops. And then he hears whispering right underneath his bed, and he can't move. And he's just laying there praying that nothing horrible is going to happen to him, that this is just a dream. And then out from underneath his bed, right next to him, he can only turn his eyes. This black figure, this shadowy black figure emerges right next to his bed. And it's looking down at him. He can't make out any facial expressions, but he can clearly define, you know, a figure is hovering over him. And it reaches down and puts its hands around his neck and begins to throttle him. And Chris is like gagging. He can't breathe, but he can't move. And at some point, the thing begins to lift him off of his bed by his neck and then throws him back down. And then the figure vanishes. Chris still couldn't move. He's choking to breathe, but he can't move. And he's just waiting for this thing to come back. And he knows that more than likely, whatever this is, is probably gonna kill him this night. So he's laying there just thinking, oh my God, I'm about to die, I'm about to die. But the thing doesn't come back and Chris can't move. And at some point, Chris, probably out of just pure, you know, adrenaline crash or something, he falls asleep. And so when Chris wakes up and he can move again, he notices there's blood inside of his bed on his sheets. And then he looks at his hands and at the tips of all 10 fingers, are these incisions, like someone had intentionally cut open the top of every finger, something he certainly didn't do. And his bed is covered in blood from these 10 cuts on his hands. And then he feels his neck and it feels tender. 
Mm. It turns out he had marks in his neck. It was all bruised up from this thing choking him out. And it brought him back to like, that really happened. He's now like actually in fear for his life. Chris immediately calls Sammy and tells Sammy everything that happened. And Sammy can't believe any of it. She's, she felt helpless because she's on the other side of the country. She can't help him. And Chris is just petrified. And he's like, he can barely speak, you know? He's like unable to articulate what's happening. You know, he's, he's describing these cuts on his hand and his neck, but there's no one in his apartment. And Sammy's trying to get him to call the police, but Chris is like, I can't call the police. What am I gonna tell him? That a shadowy figure is coming in my apartment and, and choking me? They're gonna think I'm crazy. Chris decides he's gonna approach this head on. Maybe that woman in San Francisco did put some curse on me. I need to go at least research it. And so there was a religious bookstore right near his house that he figured might have some things on demonic possession and demons, the occult. And he goes in there and he kind of awkwardly approaches the, the store owner and is like, I'm looking for, you know, books about demons and, and witchcraft and like how to protect yourself against that. And the guy points him towards a section of the store. And so Chris goes over there, he scoops up a whole bunch of books. He also buys like a whole bundle of crucifixes. So like at least 10. So he's got all these crucifixes. He's got all these books about demonic possession and witchcraft. He buys all of that and he leaves and he goes back to his apartment. When he gets back after doing some research, he ends up putting these crucifixes all over his apartment, like every room. And he takes salt and he draws a line all through his apartment against the baseboard of every wall in the house. And at every corner of the house, he'd pile up little little piles of salt. He was gonna do all the things that people say to do if you're dealing with demons or ghosts or anything through witchcraft. He was kind of grasping at straws a little bit. So he went out and did everything he thought he could possibly do to protect himself. That night, which was April 16th, we don't know what happened to Chris, but something scared him so badly then in the middle of the night, in a full panic, he runs out of his apartment and he checks into a hotel and does not. Tell you, man. I would have been gone. And then that's another thing, like when moving across the country and stuff, like, you know, um, chasing like a job or something, you moving out there, you have no. No really family or close friends there that, like, you'd be like, hey, can I come over your house? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You ha you might come across friends and you might develop friendships. But, but not, not to the like, point where you're going over their house and spending the night. Spending the night and stuff. And, like, you ain't got family to really night. call on like that to be like, yeah, just come crash here. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's another reason why I ain't going to hold you. I was like, because you remember that time we was, uh, we was in a store and she came. She was like, hey, I got a job opportunity for you in Cali. You like uh, I was like nah I'm I'm kind of cool bro like I don't know it, it could have been foreshadowing for some you never know but I'm happy where I'm at now so I ain't this shit is sad bro cause low key I'm mad at the friend for even bringing her to the like have you contacted the friend that even brought her. To even see, like, why? Like, who is she? Like, what's she about? Do you really know her like that? Like, who is she to you? Is she a family friend or, or yeah. a family member? Or or did you just meet her, like, by, like coming here, and it's just somebody you know that's in the city? Is yeah. She, you know how people like, oh, my friend, people use that loosely. Especially in that industry, but... Mm. Oh, yeah. But something scared him so badly... Then in the middle of the night, in a full panic, he runs out of his apartment and he checks into a hotel and does not stay at his apartment. The next morning, April 17th, when Sammy called Chris to check on him. Now remember, this is 1999. There was just landline phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she calls his landline at his, at his apartment to check on him. There's no answer because he's not there. He's at the hotel. And Sammy, who's been speaking to Chris and other friends that have been speaking to Chris and everyone's concerned about his mental health and what's going on with him, when she doesn't get Chris to pick up his phone, she calls the police and she says, hey, I'm concerned about my friend. Can you do a welfare check on this guy? And they go over to his apartment and it's locked and they kind of look in the windows and everything just seems kind of quiet. And so they leave and they tell Sammy like, hey, look, it's locked. We can't really do anything. Um, you know, let us know if you don't hear from him in the next couple of days. 
And so that was it. And so Sammy's like super concerned. And so she goes to work on the 17th. And then when she gets back, she has a voicemail from Chris who had called her at some point during the day while she was out. And on the voicemail, Chris tells her in a voice that was different than the past few days. The past few days, he was scared. He was really scared. This time, he is defeated. You know, he was like resigned to whatever was going on. And he says to Sammy on the voicemail, he's under attack. And tonight, they're gonna kill me. And there's nothing I can do. As soon as she's done listening to the message, Sammy calls Chris, but she can't get in touch with him. She knows she just talked to the police who were there at his apartment that day. They're probably just gonna tell her like, hey, wait until tomorrow. We just told you, you know, earlier, just give it a couple days. And so she just decides that she's gonna go to bed and she's gonna try calling him again on April 18th. On the morning of April 18th, Chris didn't show up for work and word got back to Sammy, who was already gonna reach out to Chris that morning anyways, but you know, the friends and family are talking about what's going on with Chris. And so word got back to her that Chris had missed work. And so she calls Chris, he's not picking up from his landline. And now she calls the police back and she says, hey, you were there yesterday. I know it was locked, but he hasn't shown up for work today. Everybody's concerned about him. Can you please go over and check? And so the police go back over to Chris's apartment. And this time the front door is unlocked mm. and they go inside and they're met with this very strange scene. You know, you have all these crucifixes that are on the wall. You have the salt that lines every room in the house. There are all these candles that have burned down to the wick. Um, there are little scraps of paper all over the, all over the apartment that were handwritten, little messages that Chris was leaving all over the house, uh, warding off spirits and demons. I mean, it just looked like out of a Hollywood set for some demonic movie or something. And they search the house and there's no sign of Chris. They're yelling for him. There's no sign of him. And they make their way into the bathroom where they discover Chris's body. Chris was in his bathtub no water in the bathtub, he's fully clothed. There's all these candles all around the outside of this bathtub. There's, you know, more crucifixes and weird relics that are in the bathroom with him. And he's on his knees and he's slouched up against the wall with his hands kind of tucked against his chest. He had no external injuries, he was just dead. And so the police take Chris's body and the coroner comes in and does a report and it comes out that Chris died of natural causes. He died Hell of a heart no. attack. And so when friends and family saw that that was his... It could, it could be a heart heart attack. Like, scared to... Basically scared to death. Mm-hmm. Like, where his heart just gave out. It, yeah. it could it could have been natural causes. But the setup of the scene doesn't scream natural causes. Mm-hmm. But you can scare yourself to the point where, like, at the autopsy, it looks as though it's a natural cause. Yeah died of natural causes. He died of a heart attack. And so when friends and family saw that that was his cause of death, they didn't buy it. They're like, I don't know how to describe what happened to him. But over the past seven days, Chris went from this happy, healthy, successful guy to a complete raving paranoid lunatic. And no one knows why. You know, it's, I mean, it's certainly possible that it was just a very poorly timed heart attack, you know, mixed in with someone having a psychotic break. Or some people say that he really was cursed by that woman in San Francisco and that that was the result. I mean, she said, you're gonna die within the week and he literally died within the week. And he described regularly over the phone to his friends and family as this was happening, these horrible experiences at night with these shadow beings in his room and it attacking him. I mean, it's just this crazy story that to this day leaves friends, family, and investigators baffled. So I'd love to hear in the comments what you think happened to Christopher Case. Was this a you know natural death or was this something else? Let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to go through and respond to as many as I possibly can. So if you... What do you take from the sea? <laughs> so this is what he looked like. So what you think, see? Ask me to, like, what do I think happened yeah. to him? Do I think that he actually, is that him? Do I think? It would be him. Um, Looks like a music is that 
type type person. In the music do I industry. think that the woman probably put something on them for real? Mm-hmm. Like I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just. Um. Do you think it was natural causes? Do you think that it it is a result of possibly some type of whatever she put on him? Can't say definite what exactly it is she put on him, but do you think um. Because you don't tell somebody I you're going to die in a week and they, and actually, they die. actually do. The only reason that I'm going to say that um, I pause. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and why didn't we follow up with, with the friend that knew her? I would like to know why we didn't follow up the friend that knew her. I would also like to, like, if if he's already told Sammy and, uh, and a couple other friends that this woman did, you know, said these things, to, I would even, like, Follow up with her to see, like, you know, see what she about. Does she seem like she, you know, a little off, you know, yeah. whatever. Like, I just try to, like, read and see what she on. And also, yeah, follow up with the friends to see how how well do you know this this woman and and all of, you know, I will ask those questions. But um, I possibly, I do feel like she put something on him only because... Yeah, I was. Yeah, I no, think. Go, go I, ahead, I, think speak, I think speak. I know people like personally that practice that stuff. Yeah, that practice black magic. That that I know personally encounters that have happened to people where yeah. people have either put like stuff like that to harm themselves, or you know, I mean, to harm someone else, or for someone, you know, whatever, or love spells, or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. I know people personally that. Do things like that. Or dabble in things. They dabble in, in stuff like that. Or associate themselves with other people that dabble in stuff like that. Yeah. So I hear about these stories. I like I've witnessed certain things before for myself. So I do know that people do things like that. I do know people that practice things like that. So it's and basically very much, saying it's it's a possibility. It's very much a possibility. Because where there's good, there's also evil. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, and that's the thing. People always conflict. Uh, oh, you can't believe in this stuff. You can't believe in this stuff. But just, like they'll believe in one thing, but not but not in the other, which is very kind of like like you can't contradict it. I guess yeah, you, you can't say, or like, you can't do that. Contra- like what you were trying to say? No, nah. but, but no, no, no. But seriously, like I mean, there's no coincidence. This man seemed like he, you know, was. Pretty happy, pretty healthy, living a normal life, worked out six, five to seven days a week, however, however much he he said, like, whatever the case may be. And then all of this stuff after the encounter with her, like, whoever this woman is, after that encounter, things just start to go, go downhill. Soon you get back home, your life changes like that. Yeah. Like, that's, to me, that's no coincidence. Yeah. Unless you, like... Really like, got what? in your own head and believe what she said, and you was like making yourself. But physical, you having physical wounds on you. I don't know because I don't know if any. I would like to see because it was only a couple days from when they found his body and it happened. True. Did he still have those marks on his yeah. neck? Did he, and was his things. finger still? I would like to know that type of stuff. I would like to know that because that would yeah. let me know a little bit more as well. Because y'all say he didn't have any physical like. It didn't look like he was strangled or cuts on his finger. Y'all just say it looked like natural causes. I think that would be very important to put in a report that he has these marks on him or these yeah. li- lig- ligature marks on his fingers, things of that nature. So that's a little, you know, I don't know. But I don't I don't know. I personally kind of do. My, my, my biggest thing is investigate. We have to look into the friend or find out who. He he supposedly had met up with in San Fran, and then find out what is his that guy's connection with the woman, and what what was the purpose of her even coming to dinner with y'all if y'all already had a dinner plan amongst y'all? Why did she have to tag along as well? Like what was her reason of tagging along? And then what did like after that have you have you spoke to her afterwards? Like what was your communication wise with her? Like. How well do you know her? Then look into her and say, why would you? Because she, because some of them will openly, openly admit, yeah, I put a spell on him, but I didn't kill him. Yeah, but I put a spell on him. Yeah. So you can't arrest me for and then, murder. And then a lot of times with that, with people that not you know thinking that things like that can be such, then it's just like, oh, she's cool, cool. She's just a crazy lady, yeah. whatever. But can't because like, honestly, can you even charge somebody like that with murder? Because I've physically didn't murder you. I physically didn't touch I you. 
So even so. if I put a spell on you and I practice it and they, and they happen, I can't be. Is there a possibility of her being charged with anything? Can you what y'all try to do? Send her to the nut house? If you, she gotta go through any type of evaluation with that, she pops and can pass it because. In her eyes, she's not crazy. In your eyes, she's crazy. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, man. Uh, sad story though. Uh, sad way to go out. You just enjoying enjoying life. Like just because I'm not is... physically wanting to, do, or what? What's her her? Because the reason why I keep asking, like, why are we not looking to her and the friend? Because what was your purpose of coming? Were you like you trying to say? Did were you trying to possibly like have, trying to set me up, trying to do something to know, me? They like knew that she was into that stuff and probably you know. Or were you trying to introduce for for a reason? Like yeah, where, where's a pre plot to to even because you were too too forcefully on, of a nature to want me to come back to your house? Yeah, you, you were trying too hard. Were That's you trying to we, come? Were you trying to get me to come back to your house to do something to me that night? Or were you or were you trying to? Like, just do some sexually. For you to want to put a spell on me, I doubt it. I think it was more, more, I don't know. It's just something about this don't. I rejected you? Yeah, it's just something about this rubs me the wrong way, though. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. But mm, I just do, I do know that just. It's hard to trust people, bro. It's hard to trust people. Even people you've been knowing for years. Mm Mm-hmm. And you feel like, oh, no, nah, they, bro, sometimes them be the ones who will snake you out the fastest because they know you trust them. Facts. So, like, even family, mm-hmm. family will snake you out for our own personal gain. So, it's not, we can never go out here and say, ah, oh, I doubt this person. Man, it's hard, like. Yeah. Some, your own mama and daddy will snake you out. So, you know what I'm saying? Unless you just got those type of. Bro, it's been the I, yeah, even that's, the look, that's real. the look. Hold on, the little girl that just went through that. No, situation. no, that's very much real. I'm just looking like, thank God that I have yeah. you know, the parents that I do have. But no, that's very much real. Yeah, like yeah. So you do have have those that are. Whew, I, I yeah. That's that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. I just hate this happen. To him, I would like to know a little bit more as far as like. Because I didn't going. think he was gonna die though, but well, it said witchcraft killed this man, so I should have paid more attention oh, yeah, to the thumbnail. They did say that. I do know that a lot of people don't believe in that, and yeah. I'm just the type of person that I do know that there's good, and there's definitely people evil. that practice it, practice witchcraft. Where there's good, there's evil. There's always evil. There has and to be a balance. Where there's light, there's dark. Where yeah. there's... You can't believe in one and not believe in the other. Like, if please you, know you, that there's people out here If you believe in that, angels, you gotta, you have to believe in demons. Yeah, there's definitely people out here that's on that. Yeah. So, just be careful. But, uh, y'all spend us up. Y'all let us know y'all thoughts about it for us in the comments. Uh, I don't know. I just... This story kind of... Mm. But at the end of the day... It's, I said it was 1999, mm-hmm. so you got to think of the time. Um, got to think of the area. They're not really, really gonna look into it. I think if something like that happened now, people would be more prone to look into stuff being, you know what I'm saying? Because because mm-hmm. of, of different times, but back then, 99, they were gonna rub rub it off with all the natural causes. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I think just with over time, people have just. Especially when you you don't have much to go off of, but it being natural natural yeah. causes like if there's or even, like it's just because of the time period they they didn't want you know what I'm saying yeah yeah I no no I definitely get what you're saying but I'm just saying if there's nothing else for you, you to show that this is actually what caused it then it's gonna automatically be deemed as natural causes yeah. regardless so yeah. y'all spin us up let us know y'all thoughts down below for us but till next time y'all know how it go man. I do go by the name DJ McKay, this is We are, we are Go and get it, ain't no time to kick it Gotta stack a flip for my folks Dollar, 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 dollar Please tell me you can hear me